up until recently if you wanted an electric car but couldn't afford a Tesla, your options were limited to a variety of fairly pious hatchbacks and that was about it. But times are changing and now if you want an electric family car, you can have anything from a Volkswagen ID3, Hyundai Kona, Kia e-Niro, MG ZS EV and this, the Peugeot E2008. Now, it starts from around about £32,000 after the government's £3,000 plug-in car grant and you get a range of up to 206 miles from the 50 kilowatt hour battery. Before we go any further, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any CarGurus videos. We'll talk about practicality and how the Peugeot drives in just a second, but first, here are five things to know about the E2008. As with all electric Peugeots, the 2008 looks just the same as the petrol or diesel alternative. Apart from, you get this bluey green tinge to the badge, different coloured grille, and of course the badging on the boot. The 2008 might look a bit SUV-like, but it's front wheel drive only, so don't go thinking that it has got any off-road potential. This is a GT line car, and I reckon it'll be one of the most popular trims because you get these cool three-strake LED headlights, the contrast roof, heated seats, and a few other comforts. Although, if you want to save a bit of money and don't care about the style so much, a lure trim is a bit better value. As with just about every other electric car, the E2008 can pre-warm or cool the cabin. You just tell it what time you're heading off in the morning and, as long as the car is plugged in, it'll get the cabin to your chosen temperature using mains electricity. It is truly brilliant for saving time on icy mornings. There are three drive modes, Eco, Normal and Sport. Even Eco is fine in terms of performance and throttle response, but annoyingly it also turns off the car's heater. So even if you've got the pre-warmed cabin, on a chilly day, it gets really uncomfortably cold quite quickly. Back to the practicality stuff then, and the good news is that this is a really good little family car. Now the boot is 434 litres, so it's good size, and you get a variable height boot floor on all but the base trim anyway, which is great because you can hide the cables under there. There's a decent amount of room back here for a couple of adults or two chunky car seats, um, and you've got decent access and a bit of good headroom if you've got to bend in and wrestle around with your kids and your kids' seat belts and all that kind of thing. It is a shame that there's no rear centre armrest, but apart from that, it's pretty good. Unfortunately, there's no fancy sliding seats or any additional versatility that you do get in alternatives like the Renault Capture, for instance. But for some context, you do get better access and a bit more leg and headroom in the 2008 than you do in a conventional family hatchback like a Volkswagen Golf. It's all very nice up here too. You can get comfortable in the driving seat really easily. I would like a bit of lumbar adjustment, but even tall drivers, I think, will be able to get comfortable up here. You will have to get used to the Peugeot's steering wheel layout, which is a bit odd because the dials are above the wheel and it kind of makes it feel like you have to have the wheel lower than you might want. So that's all a bit weird. But if you can get comfortable up here, then everything else is really nice. The materials are good. The layout's really sort of modern and minimalist, just very posh looking, I think. It's just a shame that it's not easier to use. These touch sensitive buttons don't always respond. And the touch screen, although the widescreen version we've got in this trim looks really cool, it's just not user friendly. You have to leave the screen you're on to change the temperature. You have to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things to find easy settings like changing the brightness on the screen. It just needs to be a bit more logical to use, really. Still, the car's nav will show you where the nearest charging stations are. And speaking of which, the E2008 has a very good charging speed. Plug into a CCS rapid charger of 100 kilowatts or more, and you will get an 80% top up in 30 minutes. Plug it in at home to a seven kilowatt home charger, and it'll be fully charged in some nine hours. The E2008 only gets a 134 brake horsepower electric motor, but it's still got plenty enough acceleration. I mean, it doesn't feel drastically fast, but it definitely feels responsive enough, even for a mid-range kind of burst for an overtake, something like that, it feels really good. And especially around town, actually, it feels quite nippy. So you can jump out into fast traffic, that kind of thing, and it feels more than comfortable, even in eco mode, actually, which does neuter the throttle response a little. It's just a very sort of slick, easy car to drive, provided you can get used to this steering, which is a bit faster than on most alternative sort of family crossovers and this kind of thing, partly because of the little steering wheel. It's got quite an eager, kind of keen entry into a corner, and, th and that's good. I don't mind that about it. I just think you might need to get used to the, the steering feeling quite neurotic around the dead ahead, I think. The ride could be a little better, particularly at low speeds around town, scruffy roads, that kind of thing. It's not too bad though. I wouldn't say it's crashy or uncomfortable. I certainly don't think it's gonna be a deal breaker. And other than that, it's just a very refined car. It feels really stable, perfectly good on the motorway. You would definitely be more than happy doing a long commute in this car, provided you can cover it in the range on, on offer. And more about that in just a second. Um, and also the brake regen, which is pretty crucial stuff for around town. 
you barely notice it. You don't really even need to know what it is, but brake regen is a system in every electric car. When you lift off the throttle, uh, it bleeds in the brakes so that it's harvesting energy even when you're just coasting or losing speed or on the brakes, whatever. But in the 2008, it's so mild, it genuinely just feels like normal engine braking in a petrol or diesel car. So if you've never driven an EV before, this will feel very familiar to you. You don't really need to think about it. If you do want to up the brake regen, you can nudge the gear lever down here and you get B mode, which makes it quite a bit heavier, but it's still smooth and predictable. So you get used to it really quickly. So that's all well and good. And I have to say that, you know, either as a school run car, as a daily commuter, I think the 2008 is just a very easy going car, really. It's a really pleasant thing to spend time in. And if you do have a long distance commute that you're considering covering in the 2008, then you should know that the official range is some way off what you'll get in the real world. As a worst case scenario, you should expect some 120 miles of range if it's a cold day and you're on the motorway for the whole journey. However, in more varied driving and in warmer conditions, you will see more like 160 to 170 miles fairly easily. The E2008 is a very fine family car and a very decent electric car as well then, but it just feels like it doesn't have much of a unique selling point. It's not the longest range car in the class. That would be the Kia e Nero. It's not the most practical either. The MG ZS EV is usefully bigger. I would even say that Hyundai Kona runs it pretty close for style appeal. So yes, it's very good. And if you can find one for a decent price and it suits your needs, then go for it because it's a very well-rounded car. But there may well be a better alternative out there depending on your priorities. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and head to Cargo's UK for loads of fantastic used cars from top rated dealers.